in my young life growing up, uh, going to family reunions, I always heard that our great-great-grandfather was born on a ship coming over from Holland, that we were black Dutch. And I accepted that until my adult life. And it dawned on me one day that my great-great-grandfather, who's buried in the Oak Grove Cemetery, his name is Henry Wilson Pope. And I thought, that's about as English as you can get. Where did the Dutch come in? And then I found out that in the main library in Canton, was a uh, genealogy booklet done by a distant relative that I never met, never knew of, from Texas, uh, Jennings Bland Pope. He did it in 1979. I went to the library, looked at the book, and copied it, and found out that the name really was Pabst, P-A-B-S-T. We came from Germany. Uh, didn't even slow down in Holland or anywhere like that. Mm -hmm. Came into Pennsylvania, and uh, the name was anglicized to Pope. And at some point, a few generations later, the family came down probably through the uh, old Pioneer Road down through Virginia to Catawba County, North Carolina, and then into Cherokee County, Georgia, and ultimately some of the folks went on into uh, Alabama and Texas, Hence, uh, that's the reason Dr. Jennings Bland Pope wound up in Texas, his family. Mm -hmm. He started exhibiting some physical symptoms that we just didn't understand. He would lose his voice. He would lose his balance. And uh, obviously, the doctor that he went to initially was Dr. Caldwell, who did everything he could for him. He progressively got worse, totally just wouldn't talk, wouldn't speak, losing weight, losing hair, and uh, Dr. Caldwell referred him to specialists who later referred him to the VA, and because Dad was a combat soldier in World War II, he was with a tank destroyer battalion, and at one point they were attached to the division that liberated Dachau concentration camp. As it progressed, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> as it progressed, uh, Dad really just became kind of unre unresponsive. He would just sit around, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't talk, couldn't talk. And as I said, he lost weight, lost hair. His eyes began to kind of had sunken eyes. And uh, the best we could say is it was, he, he just had a moral dilemma of some kind. He was, uh, when he was healthy, he was uh, a deacon and a song leader in our church, Oak Grove church in South Cherokee County. From elementary school to high school, I was, I was two different people, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. And uh, they probably didn't understand why or the change or the reason. Mm -hmm. So... You, you said before we got started, I think we ought to put it on the interview that your father, at, in the end, looked like a concentration camp inmate. Right. I had indicated earlier that he uh, he was with the, the unit that um, the division that liberated Dachau. He dad passed in 1969. He was 48 years old, or just a few months short of being 48 years old. And he actually looked like he came out of a concentration camp. Again, sunken eyes, thousand yard stare, hadn't talked in a long time, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Years later, when I started going to his Army company reunions, and I, I've seen the documentaries, but then I talked to these veterans who were there. They remember the warm ovens. They remember the smell. They remember the, the cattle cars of bodies and the bodies stacked up. And that's what got to my dad. He never got a physical scratch on him after 180 days of combat. It was mental. It was a soul injury. Being a deacon and a song leader in his church, there was this moral dilemma with what he had lived through and what he believed mm -hmm. should be right. And yet they liberated the inmates from the concentration camp. Correct. I did. I applied with Cobb County Police Department and was selected. I went to work in 1970 mm -hmm. uh, with Cobb County Police Department and uh, started out as a patrol officer, later uh, detective, later promoted to sergeant, lieutenant, in uh, captain rank when I retired from Cobb County. What year was that that you retired? Uh, I did a short tour of duty with Cobb County, actually. Uh, I worked 12 years. 
12 years. 12 years, Japan. yeah. The department just hit a growth spurt and a lot of rank. People made a lot of rank at that time, so. Well, that's amazing yeah. uh, advancement in rank in mm -hmm. 12 years. Right. How, how did it come about that you became police chief in, uh, in Canton? Uh, I decided I wanted to get back into law enforcement. I heard they had an opening and I applied for it mm -hmm. and was selected. Well, uh, there, uh, I think we're missing something from this story okay. because there ha had to be something that obviously attracted everybody to you, do you think? Don't, don't be shy. It, why, why do you, it, you must have been very me, good at what you were doing, I guess. Is well, I tried I to be. I, I tried to be good at it because, again, I want to go back to I, I had to be good at it. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't have any choice because of what I had gone through the the bad time mm -hmm. <laughs> while I was at North Cobb High School and looking back on the good times mm -hmm. at Ackworth and all those that I just uh, indicated a while ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to succeed. I wanted to be good at it. Mm -hmm. How long were you police chief in Canton? About, let's see, uh, from, what did you say, 84 until... 90, 84 to 96. Okay. And you're going to ask me why I left there? <laughs> you're going to ask me why I left there? Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, we're going to do that. Okay, I was... But I want to go back and talk about uh, why you were there, too, but talk about why you left. Okay, I was... Uh, everything was going great at Canton. I had no issues, no problems, and I got a phone call one day from an investigator with the Georgia Peace Officer Standards and Training Council. And he said they had two openings, two vacancies, and uh, for investigators. Uh -huh. They wanted a police chief and they wanted someone who'd been a sheriff. Uh -huh. So I interviewed, I interviewed for that and I took the job as investigator with Post. So I interviewed and became the director of investigations for Post. Mm -hmm. Peace Officer Standards and Training Council. Now, mm -hmm. that is the agency, the state agency that licenses police officers. Mm -hmm. There is a governing board, the council members who are appointed, uh, some by the governor, uh, some by virtue of, of law, by the position they hold, the director of GBI, those sorts of things. And uh, the best way I can tell you how post operates is if anyone wants to be a police officer in Georgia, they go to a police agency. Mm -hmm. If they meet the hiring standards of that agency, they're hired. Mm -hmm. And then an application is sent to post for certification, a license. A certification division would make sure that is in order. They get approval to go to the, the training academy for certification. Now, as I said, I was the director of investigations until I retired in 2014. Mm -hmm. And if you see on the news, for example, that a, a certified officer is, gets in trouble, it mm -hmm. could be mm -hmm. an agency violation or a criminal charge or something like that, that officer can be the uh, subject of three separate and distinct investigations. Mm -hmm. One is the agency would do the internal affairs investigation to determine what happens to employment. If it's a criminal charge, somebody would do a criminal investigation to get them into the judicial system, and then Post would conduct an investigation to see what happens to their state license. So there's three separate distinct investigations. When I was working with Milford Smith Jewelry, uh -huh. uh, I attended the business association meetings. Uh -huh. And if memory serves me, Pete Brumfield was the president of the association at the time, and this was in the late, uh, the mid to late eighties. So, Dr. Bill Sharpton, the optometrist on Main Street at the time, the discussion came up among the membership about the way things were going to grow the things that were going to happen in Ackworth. So there were some really forward-looking people in that business association. Mm -hmm. and you can give them a lot of credit for things that have taken place in Ackworth over the years. But the discussion came up that we need a visitor center. And finally, Dr. Bill Sharpton, I'll never forget this, he said, 
well, you know, the railroads, they're getting rid of the caboose on the trains. Maybe we can get a caboose. Mm -hmm. And you know what they, do you remember the story about Hanging the bell on the cat. <laughs> okay. okay. Anyway, some people may remember that. I spoke up and I said, hey, I've got a friend who works with a railroad. Let me find out from him what it takes to get a caboose. I called Bill, and he said, write a letter on business association letterhead to the headquarters, I think in Jacksonville, Florida at the time. Tell him." Your city would like to have a caboose. I wrote the letter. Now, what are we thinking? It's going to be two years before we get a caboose, right? And I was sitting in the jewelry store one day, and the phone rang, and it was Bill, and he said, "This was." He said, "Your train's going to be there in two weeks." And I went, "Oh no!" <laughs> okay. This is only like a month after I'd written the letter, uh -huh. and I thought, "Oh my goodness, what are we going to do now?" So now. We had to get together and say, where do we put a caboose? We're thinking two years down the road, we got time. Mm -hmm. There was a gentleman by the name of Burn Max, Burn Maxwell who ran the travel center at 92 and 75. And at that time, their big sign had a train logo, a railroad cross arm logo on it. And I talked to Burn and I said, is there any way you could put the train on your, the, the caboose on your property until uh, we find a place for it? He called me back the next day. He talked to his uh, owners, I guess, and he said, sure, bring it on. So then I said, okay, how do we move this thing? Where do we put it? And they were going to put it on the siding that was just, um, well, it's gone now, but again, near Crane Taxidermy, there used to be an old mill there that some of your interviewees have talked about, Mac especially, I think. And there was a siding right there. So they were gonna put it on that siding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so <clears throat> I said, okay, now we, it's gonna be on the siding, but how do we get it from there over to uh, the travel center? Well, the railroad said, well, we're gonna supply the cross ties and the ballast, the rocks, the ballast mm -hmm. and the rails and along with the caboose. Okay, great, but how are we gonna move it? And I really wish I could remember the name of the gentleman, the company who owned heavy equipment here in Ackworth, or just outside the city of Ackworth. I really apologize that I can't recall his name. He gets a lot of credit. I called him at no charge. When the time came, the railroad put down the, the little section of track over at the travel center and this gentleman brought heavy equipment to the siding, lifted the caboose off, put it on a big trailer, took it over there and put it on the tracks. Family, I have, I have two sons, four grandsons, mm -hmm. and super proud of all of them. They all have good work ethics. I have one son who is just really an accomplished, uh, uh, he works in a machine shop, mm -hmm. but the things they do, they build uh, things for satellite dishes and equipment and just mm -hmm. I'm just in awe of mm -hmm. what he can do mm -hmm. with machinery and his uh, mechanical skills. Now at that time Lockheed and Dobbins Air Force Base were really really active. I have seen airplanes that you only read about in history books now. Mm -hmm. um, the bombers and the fighters and everything like that and I just really really was attracted to aviation mm -hmm. and uh, Later on, I, I, I'd always wanted to be a pilot, so I was able to get my pilot license. I, I got a pilot license, I got a glider license, and I glider had a, I got a glider commercial license. So I've worked uh, part-time at some glider fields, giving rides. When I was in England, mm -hmm. I joined a glider club over there and did some glider flying. And my wife now, she works, she's the customer service manager at the uh, Cherokee County Regional Airport in Ball Ground, oh, really? and she's a pilot. And my mm -hmm. son, who's a, a lieutenant with Cobb County, he's a pilot. Mm -hmm.